From the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, welcome to Robert Schuler with the Hour of Power. Today, Dr. Schuler's special pulpit guest will be professional golfer Chris Johnson. Sharing their musical ministry will be Grammy Award winner Larnell Harris and renowned pan flutist Zamfir. Dr. Schuler's special pulpit message today, you are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. Welcome now to Robert Schuler with the Hour of Power. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. In preparation for the morning message, hear these words from Isaiah 60. I will make you an eternal excellence, a joy of many generations. You shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer and the Mighty One. Instead of bronze, I will bring gold. Instead of iron, I will bring silver. Instead of wood, bronze, and instead of stones, iron. Your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. Also your people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in its time. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Thank you, O Father, for this beautiful morning for the song of the bird, for the ray of sunshine, and for the beautiful faith that comes into our spirits through your holy presence. So bless us, O God, for we have come to love you and to praise you. Thank you, Father, that you are reminding us that all of us have soft spots where we lack knowledge or experience or understanding. 
where we lack strength or courage. Show us what our need is and give us the courage to be honest and to talk to you about it. We thank you for the dream that you are giving to us this morning. Touch our hearts and our minds with the knowledge of your goodness and your grace. Help us always to remember that with you, all things are possible. Now we pray this prayer in the name of Christ. Amen. We're so happy you've joined us for the special summer series of Hour of Power programs. We feel truly blessed to be part of such a far-reaching ministry. Each day, the mail brings thousands of letters from persons who are being helped by this positive Christian telecast. You may share in this outreach by simply sending your letter of support to Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Pastor Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In appreciation of your support, Dr. Schuler has a very special and useful gift for you. This is a handy little pen light that fits in your purse or in your pocket. Its size makes it convenient to carry with you to a dark restaurant or theater, providing light to read the menu or program. It's designed in a beautiful shade of blue. The exciting feature, though, is that printed on the pen light are the words of Jesus Christ from the Bible that say, I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. This is a gift for you today from Pastor Schuler. It's his way of saying thank you for making it possible for the Hour of Power program to continue. You'll find this pen light so useful for yourself or you may want to give it as a gift. 
So write today and request your pen light gift. And remember, the Hour of Power is made possible only by the generous giving of those who receive redemption from its powerful positive message. We hope that person is you. Today is the last day of this offer, so write now. The address is Robert Schuller, Garden Grove, California. That's Robert Schuller, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuller, Box 34212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. Please write the word pen light on the outside of your envelope to hasten delivery of your gift to you. I'll be back later and tell you about a free printed copy of today's message. But now, let's return to this service.
Chris Johnson is my guest, and she's the first time I've had a professional women's golfer as a guest. Doesn't she look great? Hi. God loves you, and so do I. Do you think it's possible for a 60-year-old man to become a golfer? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. <laughs> Dr. Ritter has problems with his backswing. I have problems holding a club. <laughs> I chose to fail at golf. As long as it's a choice. <laughs> how, did you, how did you become a professional golfer? Well, that's a long story. But uh, it started out, I was born in a small town and a golf course was very close and so I had the opportunity to play. I had um, a lot of opportunity. It wasn't alone. I had a lot of help with people. Alex Weber, the pro that was in our town, gave me lessons, worked with me from the time I was five till I was 18. And my parents were able to send me to golf tournaments as I got older, both in the area and then out of the area. I went to the University of Arizona and was able to play golf and earn a degree at the same time. I went there on scholarship. I have an accounting degree. And after I would finished four years of golf there, I felt, let's give the professional tour a try. And um, just with people helping me with my game and friends and support and God giving me talent, I made it on the professional tour. How long have you been professional? I've been out on the tour since July of 1980. And so eight years. How do you account for the fact that sometimes you have a better game than other times? I think everything changes daily, your metabolism, your, your thoughts. Some days something bothers you, the next day it doesn't bother you at all. And uh, it's amazing that you can play well more than three days in a row or something. Um, it's just when you have a bad day, you have to be patient. You have to know, I, the pro that I work with, Fred Marty, said, you kn you're going to have your string of birdies. Does possibility thinking work on the golf course? That has to, because if I know I'm going to play well, I'm going to have those good holes, and even if I start out poorly, then I know I can turn it around. I know that it's almost a choice. I was playing in, in Hawaii, and I, I wasn't playing well, and I said, I'm a better player than this. I just told myself, I, I want to play better. And I wasn't swinging well, but I'm going to play better. And it's a choice sometimes of just saying, yes, I want to do better. I'm going to give it my all. And, and it did. It turned around. What's been the biggest satisfaction you've had in your professional work? Um, there's, there's been a lot of satisfaction. I think one of the first times I was truly satisfied was when I won in my hometown of Tucson. And I walked down the 18th hall and I, I mean, if I broke my leg on the way to the green, I wasn't going to win. I had about a five to six stroke lead at that time. 
and the applause of friends and adopted family members that were there in Tucson. It was, I really felt like God had really blessed me and that this was something that's wild. When someone says that they'd, oh, the applause, does, applause doesn't matter, they're lying, I think, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it really does feel good. And I think it also feels good. So that was one instance. On another line, I've helped uh, work with a junior, FCA had a junior golf camp, and I helped with that. And there's a lot of satisfaction in that also. So there's a lot of ways of getting satisfaction through professional golf. Your faith. You, I, you've told me about your, your <laughs> pilgrimage in the faith. Can you do that? That's a wonderful story of how you've developed. Well, um, I, I was brought up and we went to church as a, as a child. And I got to college and got involved in some parish Organiza parachurch organizations, and I thought, wow, this is really it. And I had all these do's and don'ts and things that, I, that just seemed like there was more structure now, and I had, I really had it going, and I was reading, and I could, when you read the Bible looking for do's and don'ts, you'll find them. They're there, if that's all you're reading for. If you read for God's love and forgiveness, that's there too. And I kind of got sidetracked on what I was reading for, and I wasn't reading for what God was trying to tell me. I knew what I was looking for. And, uh, then after I got on the tour, at, one way to play golf is to be relaxed. Well, if you're worried about your do's and don'ts, and if you didn't send your tithe in on time, you're not going to play well, and that just doesn't work. So um, I knew that that wasn't going to work for me, and I had some help with a Christian counselor, Waylon Ward, and through all this, I know that God loves me, and so do I. <laughs> and that was something that I had to know that I was okay. God gave me a lot of talent. He gave me a lot of opportunity. And it's my job to go out there and do the best that I can with what he's given me. That's wonderful. Very positive now, right? I try to be. <clears throat> of course. Tell me, um, you're married today? Mm -hmm. And your husband's a professional golfer or he's managing you? Both. Both? <laughs> okay. Uh, finally, if people come to you or came to you and they didn't have any religion and they didn't have any faith and they asked you about Christianity or Jesus Christ, what, how would you share your faith with them? Well, I think I'd say that no matter what you're doing, no matter where you are, no matter where you've been, God loves you. And that we can make a choice and, it, and that God has provided Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us to have a better relationship with God. And so through Jesus Christ, we, we can experience some true love, real love that doesn't go away when everything turns, doesn't turn rosy. And so I think that that makes a difference, that God loves us no matter what we've done. And you don't have to work on your do's and don'ts and clean up your act that he, he understands and he's compassionate. And I think that that's one thing that I didn't understand, that there's compassion in a relationship with God. Chris Johnson, you're an inspiration. I'll, I'll keep watching the sport page for well, you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your letters. God bless.
George Zanfir comes from Romania. This is made from bamboo. Yes, it's a bamboo wood. From China? China, Japan. J Japan. Yeah. And you hand make these? Yes, myself. They are it's, works of art, and those are others. Hmm? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, the same instrument, but uh, it's a little different difference between the big one and the little one. Never, yes. never in my life have I listened to music that's quite as pure as when you have. What, what is that quality that that absorbs me from this? Is it the purity of natural sound? Is that it? I think uh, the pan flute is the oldest instrument in the world. No, after the last documents, uh, people say that the pan flute existed about uh, from twelve thousand years. Really? Yes. 12,000 yes. years? Because the first pan flutist in the world was the wind. Oh, the first pan flutist in the world was the wind. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and the first pure sound was uh, the bamboo. Yes. When the wind broke bamboo and blew in the two. Thank you so much. Thank you very we much. We really love you. So honored to have you here. Uh,
I'm continuing my uh, series of messages, and I will be on this really for some weeks to come, uh, preaching from the book, Success is Never Ending, Failure is Never Final. My text for the morning from the Sacred Scriptures is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 5. Jesus, in his Sermon on the Mount, said the words that I still find stirring my spirit. They are, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Now, what does that have to do with chapter 5 in a book called Success is Never Ending, Failure is Never Final? How do I tie the two together? Very simply. Chapter 5 in this book, How to Be a Success, means I teach how there are eight basic positive attitudes that you must have if you want to succeed in anything, whether it's school, college, profession, occupation, relationships, I don't care where you apply it, it's universally applicable. There is no doubt about it that fundamental to anything and everything that happens in your life is your own attitude and that's a choice. Now, we have come up with eight positive mental attitudes which are fundamental to success and people who fail, fail usually in one of these eight areas. One of the positive mental attitudes in this chapter is have a positive mental attitude toward yourself and a second one is have a positive attitude toward other people. Now let me tell you why I am an incurable Christian. Always in love with Jesus Christ. I have observed this doesn't require much intelligence or perception. I have observed that there are people in life that basically build up people and there are people in life that basically take down people. There are people that are basically lifters and there are other people that are levelers. There are the boosters and then there are those who just take the wind out of your sails. It has been said that everybody goes through life with two baskets in his subconscious. In one basket he collects all of the negative things that people have said about him, all of the negative things that have ever been attributed to him. In that basket are all of the memories of all of the negative experiences he's had. And he can't keep from peeking into that basket. And he looks back and he remembers what somebody said a year ago and two years ago and 20 years ago or 40 years ago when he was in the kindergarten class. And the teacher said something negative. There is that basket of negative thoughts, put down comments from relatives and friends and colleagues and teachers and pastors and religious teachers and preachers too. There's another basket. That's the basket in your subconscious where you have a collection of all of the compliments you've received. A pats on the back, honors and awards. And you know, that basket isn't as full as it should be. It's been said that if you weigh most baskets, the average person, the basket of put-downs is heavier than the basket of booster ideas, which explains why even super successful people have their own feelings of inferiority. Dr. Bernstein had a television show a while back where he showed the interesting things that they have in the Library of Congress and he came out with a little box. <clears throat> in that box in the Library of Congress are the items that were found on the person of Abram Lincoln the night he was shot to death. In that little box is a simple little pocket knife that Lincoln always carried with him and actually used as a young boy to whittle wood. In that box was a handkerchief with the monogram A-L. A-L. We like monograms. It says, this is who I am, and I want to be proud of who I am. And I hope people think so too. In the box was a little pocket knife, a monographed, uh, monogrammed uh, a handkerchief, five dollars in Confederate coins. Also in that box was a newspaper clipping. It had been folded and unfolded many, many times. 
as if he'd carried it in his pocket for a long time and had obviously read and reread it. The newspaper clipping was an article reporting on a speech that Lincoln gave, and it was written by the British statesman John Bright. Here is what that newspaper clipping said. Abram Lincoln is one of the greatest men of all times, a great leader. <laughs> he must have had his own insecurities. He had his critics. He had his enemies. He needed every day to believe that he was great. And he cut that little newspaper clipping out and he unfolded it and read it again and again and again. I have my insecurities. Abe Lincoln had his. You have yours. Nothing we can do is better than to affirm people. I was in a line signing books a couple of years ago. I've been done doing it a long time. Standing in line was a young girl, maybe 20 years old, and she wore this button. I was so impressed with it, I commented on it. She said, would you like it? I said, yes. This is the button. It says, act glad to see me. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Maybe someday I should manufacture these and distribute them. If every person who came to you smiled and said, hi, what would that do to you? We all need self-affirmation. If you want to read the real tragedies of life, wow, read about, read about the people who were never affirmed and never had anybody who really believed in them. Now you know why I am attracted to Jesus Christ. Why? He began his public ministry and in the Sermon on the Mount, which years ago I committed to memory and for about 20 years delivered word for word from memory without comment or interpretation. In the early part of that Sermon on the Mount, Jesus looks at a great crowd of people. Now, mind you, they weren't all, quote, church members. Mind you, they weren't all, quote, Christians. Mind you, they weren't, quote, all Holy Spirit-filled persons. Mind you, they were not all perfect, wonderful human beings. You can be sure that in that big crowd of 5,000 people, there was a Duke's mixture. Without qualification, separation, or judgment, Jesus said to the whole bundle, You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Maybe I am somebody. Maybe I am. That was his teaching. He affirmed the value of every single person. I believe in you. I love you. That's Jesus' message. It's fantastic. I was thinking the other day, I was looking through my Bible, and I came in this book of Chronicles. And I'll tell you, I have to confession to you. I don't recall ever reading every word in the Holy Bible. Because every time I've gotten to Chronicles, I kind of skipped over chapters 1 and 2. Let me sh show you what the first book of Chronicles is. Canaan begot Sidon, his firstborn in Seth. The Jebusite begot the Amorite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Sinite, the Avidite, the Zemurite, and the Hamathite. So and so begot so and so and so and so begot so and so. He had two sons. This goes on, parag I mean it goes on page after page. This guy begat that guy and this guy begat that guy. Why in the world does the Bible use its precious space to list all of those begats anyway? Here's the answer. Every single one of those persons is a link. 
That's the key. Everyone is a link. And you take out any one of those persons and you wouldn't have a New Testament. That's the key. I was so shocked a couple of years ago when somebody doing a history of Sioux County, Iowa, which is my home territory, sent me a newspaper clipping that John Schuller was driving his wagon load of coal when the horses ran away. And it said he narrowly escaped death. He was thrown off the wagon, landed under the wagon. The wheels went over his neck. And it was a miracle, they said, that he wasn't killed or at least paralyzed from the neck down. Now, what's so important about that? Well, about 10 months later, my father was conceived and my, if, if, if grandpa had been killed in that wagon accident, my dad wouldn't have been born and I wouldn't be here. Listen, let me tell you something. Every single person listening to the sound of my voice is nothing short of a miracle. You don't know how close you came to being linked off by your great-great-grandfather. And if you went back far enough, your predecessors survived the Black Plague in Europe, or they survived a shipwreck. The linkage has never been broken from Adam all the way down to you. That means you are special. And Jesus knew that. He knew that every person is a link. And that linkage is all important. We'll never know how important. That's why you look down at a person and you know that they're, they have a reason and you believe in them. I'm looking at people now, you say, that may be true, but Dr. Schuler, let's get down to reality. Get down to reality is I've got problems, I've got shortcomings, I've got failures. I've got a record and it's not good. All I can say to you is the same God who made it possible for you to be born and to be alive today has a plan for your life and it's loaded with possibilities. I have no doubt about that. Oh, I get letters. I got a letter the other day that really thrilled me. A young man by the name of Cohen. It's a remarkable story. As he said, at the age of 14, I got into drugs. Uh, at the age of 18, I got married. At 19, I fathered a child. At 20, I left my wife and the child. At 21, I finally got caught trafficking in heavy drugs and sent to jail. It was pure hell. It reached a point where I had nothing to live for. I was going to kill myself. Somebody handed me an old book entitled, Tough Times Never Last, Tough People Do. He said, that book was the beginning of my faith. That book was the beginning of my finding the Lord. I listened to what you wrote in that book, and you said prayer works, and I prayed I'd get out of the place. And Dr. Schur, I did. My reason for writing you today is, today, I am a senior at the University of Cincinnati. I am president of the Foreign Language Club, active at the height of student government. I will graduate in June, and I've been nominated for who's who in American colleges and universities. Will you applaud him because he's probably listening to us right now? What will happen to you when you begin to believe in you? Now, if you've lost faith in yourself, take heart because everybody doesn't agree with you. God doesn't. He still believes in you. 
And as long as there's one person who believes in you and his name is Jesus Christ, you've got a fantastic future. Timothy Stollard is rather a famous guy in his own way and is his teacher, Mrs. Thompson. Now she was in one of those small schools where you have first, second, third, fourth grade, you know, fifth and sixth, and then they roll over to another small school. I went to a, that kind of a school where I had one teacher in the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grades. It's called a country school. Well, Mrs. Thompson said that when Timothy was in the first grade, she wrote down, chose promise. Second grade seems confused this year. Third grade, very much a problem. His mother is very sick. Fourth grade, I don't know what to do with him. His mother died. That fourth grade year, Christmas came, and the students brought gifts. And this terror of a student now, Timothy, brought her two gifts crudely wrapped in his own hands. And she opened the one, and it was a bottle of perfume, but it was half empty. Obviously, it had been half used. The other gift she opened it, and it was a, also a used gift. It was a rhinestone bracelet. Once it had been gold-plated, but the gold plate had worn off. Two rhinestones conspicuously missing, and the students saw it when she opened it, and they laughed at it, and they laughed. And she felt sorry for Timothy Stollard, who gave her these used gifts. And she said, oh, Timothy, they're beautiful. They really are. I like them very much. Class was dismissed. And for the first time, he lingered until the end. And he came up and he said, Miss Thompson, did you really like them? Really? She said, oh, yes, Timothy. She said, the perfume is nice. She said, look at turning the rhinestone bracelet upside down. There wasn't a stone missing. She said, it's so pretty. He said, I'm sure glad you like them. Stops them because they were my mom's. She lost touch with him through his junior high years. It was not until he graduated from high school that she got an invitation to high school graduation. And he said, I'd love it if you could come. She came and he was salutatorian. And four years later, she got another invitation. And he, she came and he graduated top of the class. Three years later, she got a letter from Timothy Stollard, MD. Dear Mrs. Thompson, I suppose you remember me. She said, you know, I wouldn't be what I am today if it wasn't for you, your love and me. She said, the reason I'm writing this letter is I'm getting married. And my wife's mother and dad can sit on with her, but would you sit in my mom's seat, please? Do you know why do I love Jesus Christ? He believes in me. He believes in you. He sees possibilities in me. He sees possibilities in you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. Have a positive attitude about yourself and every other person, and you're on your way toward a success that will never end, and failures, but they'll never be final. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you brought us here this morning just to tell us this, that you think we're special. You've kept us alive. We're here because of centuries and centuries of predecessors planning through an unbroken chain. Why are we here? I guess it's because you, Jesus Christ, want to use us to be bright lights 
in a dark world, the salt of the earth, making a difference in our home, our family, our work, our community. Put a light on in our heart, Jesus Christ. Shine through us. This is our prayer. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may God give to you his peace. And you're going out and in your coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears until you come to stand before Jesus in that day in which there is no sunset and no dawning. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. It is our prayer that the music and message of the service have ministered to your personal needs. Truly, the Spirit of the Lord is here this morning. If you'd like a printed copy of today's message by Pastor Schuler, it's available for you. Simply write Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Pastor Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. And Pastor Schuler is so pleased to offer you today a lovely little gift. This pin-sized light will help give you the necessary light for you to find a door lock or read in a dark place, or simply illuminate your path at night. The color of the pen light is a pretty pastel blue, and printed on the pen light are these significant and meaningful words of Jesus Christ from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verse 46. I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. This can be a daily reminder that Jesus is the light we seek and follow. This is the beam that directs our path and leads our way through life. So don't miss your opportunity to request this inspirational and useful gift. And remember, today is the last day that this handy pen light will be offered on the air. Send your request for your pen light to Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. That's Pastor Robert Schuler, Garden Grove, California. In Canada, write Robert Schuler, Box 34212, Postal Station D, Vancouver, British Columbia. Please put the word pen light on the outside of your envelope and please remember, this television ministry currently in its 19th year is only possible because of the ongoing support of its television congregation. Today, if you're facing one of life's dark, challenging moments and feel discouraged, our New Hope Telephone Counseling Center is available for you. 24 hours a day, trained and loving counselors await your call. Simply dial area code 714 and the words New Hope. That's area code 714 and the letters N-E-W-H-O-P-E. And now the hour of power in its 19th year of ministry completes today the 970th telecast coming to you from the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California. This international ministry is made possible by the free will gifts and offerings of its Eagles Club members, members of the Crystal Cathedral Church of the Air, as well as others who so generously provide their support. Thank you for tuning in our broadcast. I'm Ed Arnold, and remember, God loves you, and so do we. The International Women's Conference takes place at the Crystal Cathedral in Garden Grove, California, October the 5th through October the 9th, 1988. For further information, call area code 714-971-4086 or write the Women's Ministry, Garden Grove, California. And it's not too early to start planning for your holiday season. Four wonderful and exciting Gloria Christmas weekends at the Crystal Cathedral are planned for you this year. Special dates start November the 23rd, December the 1st, December the 8th, and December the 15th. For a full-color brochure, write Gloria Christmas Weekend, 12141 Lewis Street, Garden Grove, California, 92640, or call 714-740-6868.